Hi, I'm Lee Thompson from the American Institutes for Research, or AIR. AIR and its partners serve as the person and family engagement contractor for the Hospital Improvement Innovation Network, funded by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Across the country, hospitals are partnering with patients and families to improve the quality and safety of care. Together, they are making great strides to reduce hospital-acquired conditions and preventable readmissions. Recently, our team at AIR had the opportunity to talk with several individuals who are supporting and leading person and family engagement activities. Here's Armando Nahum, a patient and family advisor and the director of the Center for Engaging Patients as Partners at MedStar Health. Most organizations that embark on PFE are, have a tendency of being a little bit afraid of bringing somebody like me who's lost someone under their care. Because their thinking is, well, all he's going to do is come in and complain. Uh, the, uh, the fact is actually the opposite. Um, if you have gone through your grieving, you've passed through that stage, people like me um, have a lot to offer because they want to help. And, and if, if you speak to uh, patients at large, after especially an adverse event, all they want to do is, what are you going to do so this doesn't happen to someone else again? And have you learned from this? Kelly Goodson shares how patient stories have been used by hospitals to provide patient and family-centered care. I think the patient stories are really the most powerful tool that we have and we've been able to leverage and use with our hospitals. Uh, they really um, understand and can empathize with the patient and their story uh, of, of the issues that they've had with the healthcare system. It really um, helps them understand what their work and how their processes affect patients and families. And it really connects the head and the heart uh, when they hear from, directly from patients and families. Uh, it, it just uh, puts a, you know, a face to, to the harm that we can cause uh, patients and families. Towsi Wilson and Courtney Mensing Nataraj share how their healthcare experiences led to their involvement as patient and family advisors. I can remember uh, being 40 years old at my birthday party and thinking, what a lucky man I am, what a lucky family I'm in, because neither I nor any of my brothers or sister or my parents had had any serious medical uh, issues. Nobody had been sick, nobody had even been to the hospital. Uh, little did I know that later that year, my life would change uh, dramatically. I uh, had gallbladder surgery, seemed to be a very minor thing, and uh, the surgeon inadvertently removed my common bile duct. Uh, that required uh, radical uh, surgery to reconstruct my liver to my intestinal tract. And I was in follow-up care and I went into my doctor's office one day and I said, Dr. Spivey, I need to help you with your front end. I said, I, I do process improvement in my work and I'm doing it for all these corporations and I would love to come in at, on a night or a weekend and work on your front end process because it is seriously broke. And he said, well, if you're serious, uh, I'll put you on this committee, this patient family advisory committee. So I started working with them and uh, we did a lot on their uh, processing. My son was born a micropremia at 26 weeks, weighing 810 grams. He spent five months in the NICU and it, to say the least, it was a roller coaster ride. And after he left the NICU, he was home for a month, and within a month he was having difficulties breathing. And I had to bring him to the ED and he was admitted to the PICU. From that point on, my son was admitted to the hospital roughly every three weeks for the next three and a half years. So from those experiences, I felt like I had a very good understanding of the medical system and our hospital and I really wanted to give back to, other, to the hospital and help other families who are going through similar situations that I had. Yvette Ortiz supports patient and family engagement at UCLA Medical Center, also a member of the Vizient HIN. Yvette's role includes helping to manage their patient and family advisory councils. You really have to start small and you really have to just um, 
present the opportunity to patients we feel will really make an impact and then start bringing them in small. So I'll just bring them into projects, bring them into uh, give you feedback on the paint you're going to put on the wall, whatever it is, just to start incorporating into the organization and then definitely, definitely get um, leadership on board, executive leadership. That's probably the biggest thing. It can, it can not be just one person, although we do want a champion. It cannot just be one person who's on board. It has to be all of executive leadership who really wants this to happen, wants this change to happen, and wants to really incorporate the patient voice. Welcoming advisors who reflect the background of a patient population helps providers better meet patient and family needs in an equitable manner. Christopher Miranda Camacho shares how the Spanish-speaking PFAC at UCLA impacted quality and safety. Last year in uh, 2018, uh, UCLA uh, with the uh, Office of the Patient Experience partnered with the uh, Pediatrics Inpatient Services where they formed a Spanish-speaking PFAC uh, for the families and caregivers of uh, their inpatients. And so from that, we got direct feedback where they let us know that there was a, a real need for language access during the rounding process with uh, the uh, pediatric teams. And so from that, uh, the pediatric services partnered with the language services department, which is also under the Office of the Patient Experience. And then we worked on incorporating interpretation services for rounds. So something that happens very commonly is uh, the families or the caregivers, they'll make corrections with regards to um, uh, home doses of medications, um, uh, whether or not labs have been drawn um, in the mornings, um, corrections with um, just information that's presented during rounds in general, either by the nursing uh, staff or by the physicians themselves. And so it really, because they're a lot more engaged and they participate a lot more, they're able to make those clarifications for the team that are very important uh, for the plan of care. Glenn Copelson, a family advisor who helps lead the UCLA Behavioral Health Patient and Family Advisory Council, shares issues that he and his advisors have worked on. There's so many issues out there and we said let's take three particular issues. One of them is patient safety, one of them is navigating the system, and one of them is patient satisfaction. We've created a couple of programs to address those. And a lot of the safety is when you actually leave the hospital. You know, there's safety issues at the hospital and, and that's really important. But safety when they're discharged is, is really more important because you don't have a caregiver around. So we make sure that the instructions that are given to patients and their family members are crystal clear. And one of the things we like to tell the caregivers is, as a patient or a family member, tell me once, tell me again, and tell me that you told me so. So on safety issues, they've kind of got this embedded in their head that they need to be very crystal clear on discharge instructions with respect to safety. That's one of the things we did. Advisor Courtney Mensing Nataraj led a patient safety project for New York Presbyterian that will be spread across their system. Another project that um, I have helped with also is uh, safety cards. And what these cards are is a lot of, we have 11 cards. They also include hacks for falls, for cowdy, for clapsies, um, for pressure injuries. And these cards educate, help educate our families. So what the card does, the top of the card will show what the hospital staff will be doing to help your child. And then the second part of the card tells you what you as a family member can do to help with your child. So it's educating the families in a way that they're able to see because sometimes they don't know what they can do. When your child is sick and you're in the hospital, a family member, they really want to do anything they can to care for their child, but they're so scared sometimes when their child is so sick that by touching them that they might make them worse. And with using these cards, we're empowering our families to engage in their child's health care and with the medical staff. From an organizational standpoint, Armando Nahum suggests what is needed to drive person and family engagement. We've discovered a couple of things. 
to continue patient and family engagement and move it forward to the next level, it really requires a couple of things. Um, number one, it requires a full-time person dedicated to patient and family engagement within that organization. And that really creates sustainability. It's not enough to just have a champion. Uh, Armando goes to a conference, tells the story of his son, and a nurse who, you know, is crying after that experience goes back all energized and say, we must do this. Well, that may only last for a short period of time. So we're finding out that if you have a dedicated person on, 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 um, that, that really drives patient and family engagement in that organization, then you have that sustainability uh, aspect to it. And um, that's one item. And the second item is that um, don't be afraid to bring the patient and family voice into complex things like sepsis. And yes, we're not trained clinically. You know, we, we really don't know um, that stuff, but you do. And what we can help you with is how to communicate what you know and what you do so that we can help you do a better job. And that true partnership really takes the organization to the next level. Thank you to everyone who took time to share their PFE stories with us. What's your PFE story? Mm -hmm.